just when you think the fire season is over, I get called out to the Walker Fire out in the Plumas National Forest. And uh, where's the fire? Actually, it was put out maybe three, four days ago. It rained pretty good. And uh, I'm at Mount Ingalls in the Plumas National Forest. And the elevation up here is 8,100 feet. So we had some rain last night. Snow level dropped down to 5,000 feet where the base camp is. And uh, this is the next day. So we only got three inches of, of snow up here. But this is a freakish uh, scene here. This is a fire season sort of incident. Turn down this radio. This is a, uh, a forest fire uh, incident. And here's the portable repeaters to provide comms for, for the fire crews and stuff. And this is the first time ever that I've put something up in snow. Actually, it was bone dry up here. Uh, nothing but wind. There was a lot of wind up here. Yeah, it was cold. But there was no snow up here. This is just rocks. This is an old lookout. And uh, the foundation is right there where all that equipment is. But, uh... We had a wind of, uh, event uh, last Sunday, so it was dry, no rain has happened yet, and they were really worried about this forest fire, you know, jumping the lines and causing more havoc and stuff. Uh, so far, this fire is the biggest fire uh, of this year, 2019 in California, but nonetheless, the wind event came through and uh, the fire crews out there did a kick-ass job and, and prevented it from, you know, being catastrophic and spreading everywhere else. Everything was contained and this is like maybe four or five days later. But uh, during the wind event last Sunday, uh, the pilots that were in the air, aircraft and helicopters, uh, they reported a uh, gust of 50 knots of wind up in the air. Uh, the fixed wing aircraft needed to be grounded because they were just bumping into everything up there as far as you know turbulence and you know the winds being all erratic and things like that so they had to be grounded and just the helicopters were working but uh, I would imagine here at 8,000 feet we got some wind up here and I'm gonna insert a picture of what it looked like when I first rolled up to this place uh, today the uh, antenna mast None of them fell down, but there was two of them. Uh, I took one logistic repeater down. Uh, that's my mission today, was to take that down uh, and leave these two guys up. This is the uh, VHF uh, command repeater and command channel, and that's the UHF link. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, running off that orange box over there. But uh, the, the poles were actually at a 45 degree angle they didn't drop completely but two of the poles were at 45 degrees angle uh, I took a RF reading from base camp and uh, it was still normal down there and uh, people still had good comms everywhere so it didn't really affect much out there if this was a full-blown fire with a bunch of people out there perhaps the, the that side of the fire over in this side probably would have had less coverage because uh, this thing is line of sight and at that angle it, you're actually having it directed towards the ground pretty much but all is well and uh, I fixed it up this kit here is running off a of solar and I didn't disturb much the uh, solar kit there I wanted to take a reading before and after so uh, just this part right here maybe the square was exposed and is highly overcast and I would say a good three quarters of the panels is covered by snow I was stepping all over the place there but now with a little bit of sun before the reading was 150 milliamps of current feeding the uh, wet cell battery in there now it's up to 260 milliamps of uh, current go feeding the kit here 
and this kit here in turn feeds the uh, repeater so through this cable right here and the repeater itself at the at, it's a Daniels Codan repeater you got two modules or two sets a VHF set and a UHF set and right now let me zero this out take a measurement just in st standby receive mode it it takes uh, 300 milliamps to run this repeater here so this is at this time of day is, is running neck and neck the solar panels are just uh, even with almost even with the uh, repeater itself take another measurement here oh it dropped down to 0.19 uh, or 190 milliamps of uh, of uh, current so that's with this much snow here which you know it, it, it's still pretty good considering that it's almost covered with snow and uh, okay we're gonna clean this off and see what how much current we get with with the solar panels cleaned off microphone shut off on me so I'm gonna overdub this and here are the cleaned uh, solar panels and the maker of this is p3 solar I don't think they exist anymore but I think they were a military contractor that built this type of uh, solar panel here. If it's flexible, you could shoot rounds through it and it'll still work. Obviously, partially covered in snow, you still got a current draw with this thing here. Uh, unlike other panels, like from my other projects, that if you cover just a little bit of it, it just chokes off the whole panel and you won't get any uh, charging of anything. But this is pretty good right here. So here we are, we're gonna check, wow, half an amp. So I went a over double of what it was before when, when it was, uh, what do you call it, uh, covered in snow. And that's enough actually to overcome the draw of the repeater itself. The repeater itself in standby mode is uh, 0.27, a little bit, let's just call it half, a little bit over half uh of what the panels are drawing so if nobody talks this thing will keep you know the the batteries trickle charge to its full capacity but of course they're going to transmit and when they transmit they're drawing two amps of current so it's a give and take thing uh, obviously the wet cell batteries you have plenty of storage and uh that would take care of that and throughout the day it's it's charging more than people are talking supposedly at this point in this fire this thing is pretty quiet this is towards the end already what the hell am i doing there i'm just farting around okay extreme pet peeve of mine in a site like this this is a freestanding pole oh by the way with the wind uh it actually drove the pole down into the ground more than what it is so that was kind of weird I mean it went like half a feet a uh, half a foot deep into the soil here and this was hard soil to begin with but I guess with the water and everything it just drove it in even more when when 40 or 50 knots uh, of wind came through here but back to my uh, rant here uh, this is a freestanding pole guided out by three guide ropes uh, to their perspective corners here uh, we utilize the uh, existing sort of metal rebar bolt thing here instead of pounding out a stake I used what whatever is around me to my benefit uh, so why pound a stake when you have something embedded in concrete and there's the uh, Mount Ingalls there 2003 GPS coordinates anyway uh, the person who installed this initially it, w it wasn't me I don't know what kind of knots these are this is a trucker's hitch but but it's like a freaking I don't know 
this knot right here is supposed to be like a slippery sort of loop that you're supposed to do uh, they, they, they did a square knot there and then down here I don't know what the hell this mess is uh, it, I had to undo that one corner over there and it took me like 15 minutes to undo all these knots I mean it was unconventional including the 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 uh, trucker's hitch uh, loop here on top too so you could have that uh, le le levy uh, pull down there so yeah this is an abortion to me uh, it, like perfect example I come up here the uh, the poles were almost leaning over at a 45 degree angle and uh, I had a you know erected uh, upright again and adjust the rope length here so you know put it back to normal but no I had to spend 15 minutes on doing one corner not there luckily it was just that one corner uh, all three of these on this particular antenna mast are done the same way some kind of abortion knot system Yeah, here we get here we go again a square knot square knot for this loop here and yeah that's not right this is my setup right here for the loop there I got a slippery sort of uh, hitch there and then just to uh, fasten these you know there so it won't move I got two slippery half hitch one hatch hit half hitch another half hitch here so all I gotta do is just pull on this rope there and that whole assembly comes apart same with this after I get done uh, running the one rope out of the loop here I just pull this and it goes straight again and I have that in all three corners so yeah that's the way you should do it maybe uh, I think I'm gonna dedicate a a video sometime in the summer next summer or whenever just to do this the simplest thing I didn't I didn't go to the Boy Scouts but still I, I learned how to do you know simple effective knots that are that are easy to undo and, and things like that so yeah a pet peeve you gotta have them and I think this site is over I thought I was going to have a fire season, but uh, I got called up to this one when everyone else uh, got passed over or denied coming over to this particular fire, so I got lucky. Something different. Alright guys, take it easy. I'm going back down the hill.